What's up everybody, TCM here, back with another video. And today I want to talk about the time that somebody tried to extort me. Now this happened a couple of years ago. I was sitting on this story for a while, but I think now it's time to share. Very, very intelligent person on the other end of this. And there's some back and forth that I think is really interesting and how he found information and tried to use it against me was very, very interesting. So without further ado, we're going to hop right in. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. We just passed 500,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. Here's to the next 500,000. Let's go ahead and kick off with this story. Okay, so one day I get a text message that says, hey, can you please check and reply to the email that I sent to? And it's an old Gmail account that I had. Uh, this is a very old Gmail account. In fact, this Gmail account was only tied to things when I would sign up for services or for random stuff like 10 plus years old, never used it for anything other than junk mail. All right. So first weird thing that happened is, hey, somebody has this email. Nobody should have this email. Second thing was this came from a 419 area code. If you are not familiar, 419 is the area code of Toledo, Ohio. I have some ties to Toledo, Ohio. I attended the University of Toledo, go Rockets. And yeah, I hadn't lived in Toledo in 10 plus years, but uh, this person was using a Toledo phone number. I looked up the phone number at first and it was a Google voice number. So I knew that was a dead end. So I went to check my email address to see what was sent to me. So this was the email I received and I just put it in a text file here. So that way it's a little bit easier to read on screen. The title of the email was potential bug bounty question mark, which I thought was pretty funny. And he said, hi, Mr. Adams, I'm not a competitor nor hired by any of your competitors. I was simply browsing the clear net and was able to obtain sensitive information by happenstance containing your name, address, driver's license number, social security number and date of birth. And with this information, I was able to obtain additional sensitive information using TLO services. So if you're not tracking what TLO services are, this is a service by TransUnion, which in the United States is a credit bureau, and they have all the information you could ever want about people, right? Like name, address, phone numbers, work history, criminal records, all kinds of stuff. And this is for private investigators. It's for police officers and such. And so this person used TLO services somehow through an employer or through some access that they had to gain information about me. Very creative. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. Now, here comes the next part. As a concerned individual, knowing the implication of how relatively easy this was for me, sure, you had access to the services. And it said, though, it may be a little bit difficult for the average layperson. I believe it is my responsibility to let you know where I got them. How kind of them. Uh, in addition, as someone who has a cybersecurity firm, I realize the potential PR headache this may or may not cause. Uh, it doesn't cause any potential headache. Everybody's been hacked in the world, right? Uh, other potential harm from this leak is obviously identity theft, weird flex, which can lead to, uh, but not limited to, an attacker laundering money to checking accounts created under your name or applying for various unsecured business loans. Not wrong. That's a true statement. I'm sure that once you learn where this info was obtained, you can contact the server and have it removed ASAP. As far as I remember, this link containing the leak has been up for 1.5 years and is still up and running to this day. Uh, please click this one time self-destructing note. Pretty effing cool, by the way. He did send me a self-destructing note. I'll show that to you in a second. Uh, if you wish to verify the veracity of the contents, I have redacted some parts of the info for security purposes. So he sends me this note here, right? And he said, please click the second note if you agree with my request I have laid out in the previous note. So I got two notes and then I got this long jumbled thing right here. We'll talk about that in a second. And he signs it key. All right. So privnote.com. Pretty interesting website. You can come in here and write a note, right? Like you can just write your note in here, say whatever. And then you have options in here. So it can self-destruct after reading it. You can set passwords. You can have a destruction notification. You can have an email sent to you that says, hey, this person opened the note. 
So that way they have confirmation of when the note was open and that, hey, they actually were able to get a hold of you, the individual. They say curiosity killed the cat and curiosity got the best of me. This is a little bit blurry because I had to zoom in on the image. But what he sent me was a base 64 format, real hackerish. And within that base 64, if we scroll down just a little bit, uh, he put some information in here. It said, hey, Keith Adams is your name. Here's your current address. Here's your date of birth. Here's your social security number. Now let me hide myself just for a second. It says, please send any amount between four to $6,000 worth of US dollars to the XMR address included in the email. So you remember this very long address right here? That is an XMR address. We'll talk about that as well. Once received, I will share with you the link containing the leaks and how I was able to obtain them. As long as I get paid for my work, I hold no malicious intent towards you. In fact, I respect you as an instructor. Okay, so up until this point, this person found my social security number somehow and was able to use that social security number against me to access information about me using TLO services. Pretty smart. And then they get a number off of the TLL services or the credit report that they found. They use a Google voice number to message me from the area that they think I am, which was Toledo, Ohio. So they set up the 419 number and then they send me self-destructing messages to a very old email account, knowing that if I open that message, they're going to get an alert and then they know that they have found an individual who at least opened the message. So I played along. I opened the message. That is what was found. Now, Monero, let's talk about Monero really quick. Monero is a cryptocurrency that cannot be traced. That is the beautiful thing about it. If you just watched the Linus hacking video that we did last, you saw that we were able to go look at the blockchain and look at different cryptocurrencies that they were trying to get people to send and be able to trace down who had sent money to that wallet. Well, guess what? With XMR, with Monero, you cannot do that. So this person is using untraceable currency as well. Also very smart. This is a very smart individual. Let's just break that down right now. All right, so let's go back to the second image here. And the second image was the second link and it just says, thank you for agreeing with my request. You have one week to deposit the XMR from the time you open this note. Now, this email to me wasn't all that threatening. They were saying, hey, we're going to release this information publicly so that you can be ashamed of yourself as the leader of a cybersecurity firm. Who cares? Everybody gets hacked. That's not really a big deal. In fact, what I did was I went out and posted it on social media myself, just saying, hey, this guy is trying to extort me just so everybody knows. And that takes away risk number one. Risk number two was him saying, hey, somebody could steal your information and then go use it to apply for loans. And that is true. We'll talk about how you can prevent that as well. And some of the things that you can do to protect yourself against things like this. So this is the gist of the email I sent back. I told them I'm not too worried about the PR headache. And I went ahead and shared it on social media. I actually did. And then I did see the TLL pool, though some of the data was incorrect. I have lots of addresses in my history and I got owned very early on in my streaming career where somebody was sending pizzas to my house. That was true. So I learned about ways to actually prevent people from getting your address or at least uh, without working very hard to do so. So I told them, good luck. We could use people like you on the good side of things. Four to $6,000 is very small potatoes for the risk that they were taking. And they could make that easily in a couple of days doing OSINT work. Obviously, his motive here was money. And we'll talk about the follow-up email that he sent me to this in just a second. But first and foremost, your information is being shared out there all the time. It's being bought and sold by parties. And your information is very, very public. There are services that you can use that go out there and will delete your information from these public places, but it doesn't mean it's going to be completely safe from everybody, especially if we talk about hacks and leaks, which is where this person got information from was a leak. And so that's very really hard to protect against. Another thing is you can work on obfuscating your address. I'll share some information on what I do is I have my mailing address for everything that I do. Nothing goes to my house. So I try to make my house address as discreet as possible. Can you find it? Of course you can find it. You can find anybody's address out there. However, I try to make it as difficult as possible and I have all my mail sent elsewhere. And that's part of just a distraction or whatever you want to call it uh, from my actual mailing address. And you could do this, by the way, with using mailboxes, PO boxes, other things where you can ship all of your stuff to. 
And then you can set all of your things that report to your credit report, like a credit card or other items, bills, whatever that report, and they can all be sent there. And then that gets sent to your credit report and that's what gets bought and sold. And then you do not have to worry about your main address getting on the internet. Now, for my people that are in the United States or that use these credit bureaus, there are three credit bureaus, TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax, all have the ability to freeze your credit. Your credit should always be frozen, okay? So you can come into all these websites and just say, hey, I wanna add a freeze in here, and then you can freeze your credit. What that means is nobody can go and apply for a credit card, apply for a loan, anything along those lines without your credit being unfrozen. There's a lot more checks and pins and things that you have to set up to have this unfrozen and it's a really nice feature. So my credit is frozen 24 seven. If I need to apply for a loan or for something that needs my credit, I'll unfreeze it for a day and then I'll go back to having it frozen. It's a very simple process. I have alerts set up that if anybody were to ever unfreeze it, I would get that notification right away. And this is a very, very nice feature for preventing uh, some of the identity theft attacks that are out there. All right, so last bit here, he said, okay, I didn't know a lot of those things, big fail on my part. This was his response back to me, by the way. He said, by the way, it was never my intention to do anything with your data or spread it, even though I use some persuasive language in my email. Sure, okay. It was from a payday loan leak that I obtained a while back. I checked the mega link and it has been shut down for some time. Sorry about the lie. Have a good day, sir. So we see extortion scams like this all the time. And I'll tell you one that's really popular and has been popular for some time is one where an attractive individual, usually female, reaches out to somebody on social media, typically Facebook or Instagram, and it's typically a male. And they'll reach out and say, hey, I find you attractive. They'll start a little chat going on. Eventually, things get a little hot and heavy. They move to a webcam and the target usually reveals themselves in some unflattering way while the scammer is actually taking photos or taking videos of this person. Once the act is done, they send some proof over to the person they're trying to scam and they say, hey, if you don't pay me money right now, I'm going to send this to all your friends and family. And they might even do a little bit of research on you, find out who your parents are, your siblings are, uh, whatever, who your best friend is, doesn't matter. And they'll say, I'll send them to these people if you don't give me money. The worst thing you can do in this situation is actually send money. Now, you could tell them to screw off, and a lot of times they will. Sometimes, unfortunately, they will actually send the photos. But the worst thing is sending money. Why? Because they still have the photos of you. If you pay the extortion fee here, what's going to stop them from coming back a week later and saying, I need more money or else I'm going to do this? And it will never end. So the best thing that you can do when you find yourself in a situation like this is just to let whatever happens happen. All right. So if there's somebody dangling something over your head, don't pay it unless you can be absolutely sure that all the information is going to get deleted. Most of the time it's not. So these scams are very, very common in this situation. I deflected it by just saying, hey, I'll go post it on social media right now. I really don't care. And you have to have that attitude a lot of times like this. So that's really it for this video. What I want you to take away from this is hey, never pay an extortion fee. Uh, number two, there are ways to obfuscate or hide your address and there are methods that you can use. Three, there are tools that are out there that you can utilize to actually delete your public information from the internet. They're not 100% successful, but they are useful. And four, if you're in the United States or an area that uses credit bureaus like we do, uh, you can freeze your credit and that is an incredibly useful tactic against identity theft. So that is it for this video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing to the channel. As always, my name is Heath Adams, aka The Cyber Mentor, and I do thank you for joining me. Peace out.